Um, I posted a link at the top in our Google Classroom because um, our students like to talk on the stream. So sure, it gets <laughs> cluttered. <laughs> Exactly at like eight fifty eight, it gets lost. So <laughs> to see some filter. thank you. They're they're happy to chat with one another, catch yes. up. I'm sure. That's true. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who have jumped on, you can go ahead and grab your Wizard um, Academy bag and your art supply bag that we use every day. And today we will need a cup of water. So go ahead and get that and have that handy. Everything else is good. And not a bad idea to have some um, paper towels or wipes nearby for um, one of our activities. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday morning. We're excited to do some more Wizard Academy with everybody. Hope everybody's been enjoying getting into the, the spirit of, of Harry Potter. I know some of you had said you um, watch the movies over the weekend. We're refreshing your knowledge about the books, rereading, getting excited again. We made our wands yesterday. We made our house ties after we were sorted into our houses. And then you had some fun with Wingardium Leviosa, learning some charms. We made some potions. We cooked up potions yesterday morning. We've got more fun ahead today, including herbology, Quidditch, always popular, right? And some divination as well. So we're expanding our repertoire as young wizards here today. We'll let you guys gather your um, Wizard Academy kit, your art supply bag, water a cup of water and because you'll need that for a couple of activities and um paper towels would be good to have nearby i should get those in the picture there there we go my table gets shifted around too let's see there we go. all right Looking like we've got some other folks joining. So in your Wizard Academy bag, let's see, the first thing we'll tackle, let's start with divination. So you can pull out the small bag that says tea leaves and fortune tellers. You can pull out the small bag, tea leaves and fortune tellers. We'll start with that one. And in it, we have a small plastic cup. You can go ahead and set that down. You can pull out your divination class chart here to aid us in reading tea leaves this morning. Tassiomancy, we will be reading tea leaves this morning. So this is a fun one for you to do with a sibling, parent, or friends, there we go. Small bag says tea leaves and fortune tellers. So that's the first one we're gonna pull out this morning. The other two we'll get to today, together this morning anyway, are mandrake and herb planting, which is a bigger bag and it has pots and soil and some fake leaves and some clay and then at the very bottom of my bag anyway was a stack of cups, three cups and in it is a Ziploc bag with a ping pong ball, um, tongue depressors and a plastic spoon and some rubber bands. 
These are the things we'll be using this morning. All right. So let's start with reading our tea leaves this morning. So to begin, you have in the bottom of your, let's pull that back out, in the bottom of your tea leaves and fortune tellers bag, you have a little pouch of drink mix. It's a very small pouch. Yours may be a different color, okay? But to begin, we can just crack this open and it says tear here on the side and has a little arrow for me to tear. So I just tore that open. You can tear it all the way off if you'd like. And you don't need the whole thing. This is made for a large bottle of water. We're just gonna use a little bit here. So you can just pour maybe a quarter of it in your cup. Just pour that over. There we go. Woo! Smell that sweetness. All right, so once you pour your mix. I apologize, what, what was the name of that bag so I can post it in the chat for the students? This was called Tea Leaves and Fortune Tellers. Tea Leaves, tea okay. Leaves and Fortune Tellers. And it's a small Ziploc with a clear plastic cup, the divination clasp paper that was folded in half, and a drink mix packet. All right. So that's one of the activities that we need our water for. We want to make our tea. So we can add our water. Oh my goodness. There we go. Woo! That is bright. So we can observe as we mix the solid powder with the liquid water and they combine. What well, I got this very brightly colored liquid here today. So Honor, we're using our um, Wizard Academy bag. And in that we, we have our tea leaves and fortune color or fortune tellers baggie. This was a small one, clear plastic cup is inside, drink mix is inside, divination class paper. I had asked that we have a cup of water on hand. There we go. Took me a minute, sorry. I'm digging uh, through that. <laughs> Yours is in a bigger bag and you have a bigger cup. There we go. So, so it may be a larger bag. There we go. Oh, it still looks, okay. You can go ahead, pull those things out. You need your cup. You need your drink mix packet. All right. And they're all different colors, all different flavors. You need your handy divination class chart. This is gonna help us read our tea leaves this morning. So remember in um, Tassiomancy when reading tea leaves, they uh, make observations, right? And color is one of the things they're looking for. The um, color and then as the, the tea is sipped and you get down to the bottom, it's looking at how the tea leaves are arranged and, and symbols that might be present. So we have a divination class sheet to help you read your tea leaves when you get to the bottom of your cup. So you, this is one that you get to enjoy and drink this one. I know when we did the, um, the candy conundrum activity, everybody wanted to eat the red candies instead of dissolve the red candies. Well, today you get to, you get to drink the fruits of your labor here and sip your, your tea that you've mixed, okay? And see what's left behind. Woo, that is very sweet. <laughs> And actually quite tart too. I think mine is 
green apple. Woo! So when you get to the bottom of your cup, you will find, look very closely, and you will see the symbol in your, in your tea leaves at the bottom of your cup. So because you're looking at the cup before you fill it, you may get a peek. But if you do this with a friend or a family member, you could do it in such a way that you go ahead and pour the drink mix so it covers the bottom of the cup before they get a peek at that. And so then it can seem very impressive as they're drinking their tea and you take it towards the end. And they do, the cup doesn't have to be completely empty because the liquid, even with this very intensely colored drink mix, is still translucent enough that if I look closely, I can see the symbol at the bottom of my cup. And so you can impress your friends and family by reading that symbol and using your chart to discern what their fortune is based on their, the reading of their tea leaves. So today, my tea leaves reveal the snake. And the snake is the enemy of falsehood, so truth and honesty. Examine pets for hidden animagi is my additional little fortune there. So if you have a, a cat or a dog or a fish or a hamster or any other kind of pet, and you reveal the snake as your symbol, it's offering you a tip today to search your pets and the patterns of their markings to look for hidden animage um, and symbols, okay? So, woo! Let's see if I can get this emptied out enough that you can see the um, symbol at the bottom of my cup that my, my, as I sipped my tea, my tea leaves revealed the symbol that gives my fortune this morning. Woo. Okay, here we go, guys. There we go. Okay, so there is my snake at the bottom of my cup this morning. Woo, and I think I ingested more sugar <laughs> than I have in a long time. Okay, so remember we only had to use about a quarter of this. You could even do a little bit less. So you can do this with, with some other friends and a family that are in the house, you can um, reuse, rinse out your cup, you can wash out your cup and use your, the rest of your drink mix and do a, a tea leaf reading for your friends and family. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. Whew, that is sweet and sour all at once. Okay. And the next one we're gonna pull out this morning is our mandrake bag. So this is a big one and it's easy to spot because it's got plant pots in it and some fake leaves, clay, soil. All right. So you have two pots in your mandrake bag. You can go ahead and pull those out. There we go, a little piece of the plastic. So two pots. I have a cup with some seeds. This is for herbology class this morning, everybody. So then there's a smaller bag that says mandrake and herb planting. 
There's a stick of clay in the bottom. There are some paper shreds and some fake leaves here, okay? So this is to create our mandrake here. And for our herbology lesson, we can plant our herbs here in our soil. So you have two pots. What I would recommend is the pots have holes for drainage. So pay attention, you have two pots. Pay attention to which one has the mandrake label. Because there is a label on one of your pots. There is a sticker that says mandrake. Let's see if I can get that. Oh, there we go. So the mandrake label, make sure you set this one aside to use for our mandrake. And I'm going to put my soil and seeds with the other pot, a pot that's, that's blank and doesn't have the mandrake sticker, okay? All right. So that was in a big bag. Look for those plastic pots. When you find that, you can start with fishing out your clay. And remember how ugly and gnarly the mandrakes were? I have one that, that we made as a cute little sample here. I, I guess it's kind of so ugly, it's cute. Um, so they are some gnarly little creatures. And remember, as they pulled them up, they screamed. They let out this ear-curdling scream. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that when you're creating your, your mandrake, you work your clay, and this is where having warm hands, I'm one of these people that always has cold hands. This is where having warm hands really helps. So if you're like me, you can warm your hands up a little bit. It helps make the clay easier to mold. You can use friction and rub your hands together and feel, remember all those ridges that were all over our fingertips? They're all over the palm of your hand. You can use the friction that builds up as those ridges rub across one another to generate some heat energy, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna get, we want a nice long root for our mandrake, okay? So just start to kind of pull that. You can twist it if you like into a tap root is what we call that. So into a nice long tap root. In botany, we call that a tap root. Okay. And then you can start to work arms that reach out, a head. So if I remember the mandrake is in the big bag that has the plastic pots in it. So from your Wizard Academy kit, we used our um, tea leaves and fortune tellers bag for the last activity. Now we're using our mandrakes bag. Woo, there we go, getting some arms here. Okay, and you can decide how ugly you want to make it, how big you want to make it. So he's going to go in this pot. So maybe I want to make him wider and not quite as tall, or I can make his root kind of curl around there. How much of him do you want sticking up and peeking out? Okay. And then you can use your pencil. or the tip of your scissors, if you'd like, to do a face or um, any body markings. There we 
go. And you can even use your Sharpie when you come back, if you want to use one of your permanent markers from our CSI adventures, you can do that. Now these guys, I feel like you need some kind of mean looking eyes there. And because they're screamers, there we go. So you can use the tip of your pencil. If you do that, you want to clean it off a little bit so that when you go to write, you don't have clay on the tip of your pencil. Or you can use your scissors if you'd like. And then, here we go. We have our leaves so that we can give him some hair here and just wedge that down into the clay. So there's a plastic tip on there that you can get down in there, however deep you'd like to go. All right. Woo, and then you can mold it up around the top. Woo, he's looking. Frightening. All right, that's how my mandrake is shaping up. And then we can put them in some soil here. So you have the paper shreds that you can use as your soil. So you can keep this guy covered. And while he's down in the soil, he's fine and he's quiet. It's only when we pull him up out of the soil that he lets that scream. Okay. Let's see. Is that sufficiently ugly? And there we go. Pull him up a little bit. I'm really bad at this camera angle thing. Here we go. You see him? All right, he's pretty ugly. I think I'm satisfied. So see what your mandrake looks like if you want to hold yours up to the camera and show your friends. You can do that as well. Ooh, I'll put him by this guy. All right, so Anthony, we just finished our, from our um, Wizard Academy kit, we started with our um, tea leaves and fortune tellers. We read our tea leaves in divination. And then we've started herbology, where we made our mandrakes. That was the first thing we did. Let me face him with my sticker. So we had a, a big bag that held our um, plastic pots, so that's the one you want, plastic pots. We had paper shreds and clay and leaves and that we used to make our mandrake. And now we're moving on to planting our herbs, okay? So we can set our magical creature aside, our mandrake. And remember that these are recorded, so you can go back and watch the beginning after we're done here. I had asked that um, everybody grab a cup of water because we used some water for our tea leaves and we're going to need some water to water our seed. If you don't have it with you right now, that's okay because you can just always water your seeds afterwards, okay, after we wrap up. But because our pots have drainage holes in the bottom, you are going to want to get a couple paper towels and fold them up and put it underneath. If you don't have that, just use your Ziploc bag and set it down under your pot for when you plant, okay? If you have paper towels, that would be a good thing, or even a, a plate or saucer. Um, 
that you could put under it um, will work as well, okay? So we want, it's good for plants to have some drainage, but these holes are um, fairly large. So I just didn't want you before you water to end up losing your soil through the bottom of your cup. So using paper towel or your mandrake and herb planting square Ziploc baggie, you can put something under the bottom so that you can be ready to plant your herbs, okay? So I am going to start the, one of the first things needed for a seed to, to grow, to germinate and grow, we need nutrients from the soil, right? So we have some nutrient rich soil and this soil, because it's potting soil, it's made for plants that are indoors in pots, also has the, these white things in here. So vermiculite, these are to help hold some water. They'll help to absorb the water and then re-release it to the soil later. So that's, and you can use all of the soil if you'd like. There we go. I was just trying not to make too big a mess because you all know I'm prone to that. Okay, there we go. So now we've got soil. You we want to, what was we, that? Can we put both of the bags? You can, um, so in the mandrake and herb planting bag, you can use that underneath and then you can uh, set aside your bag that we just emptied for the soil, okay? And take your seeds. So in this, the portion cup, you can see a variety of seeds in here. You want to just use your fingertip and really you can just go down to about your fingernail or the first knuckle and just um, make some little holes in your soil. Just poke, just poke and you can make little nest to put your seeds in. All right, and then you can just sprinkle a few in each hole. There we go. There we go. All right. And then come back where we made that little hole. We went down to about our first knuckle, okay? Then you can just spread the soil over the top. You don't want seeds sitting on top of the soil. You want them to be in the soil with a lot of soil underneath. So there's plenty of room for the roots to grow down and, and take up more nutrients, but, and there's not, Two, the, the, you have an kind of insulating layer of soil on top of the plants, or on top of the seeds rather, to keep them moist so that they don't um, dry out exposed directly to the sun. So the sun will warm the soil and the water will filter down into the soil. So if you have some water handy and you want to go ahead and, and water your seeds in, you can do that now. Otherwise, that can wait and you can do this after. But what else are our plants going to need to grow besides the soil and the water? What is the other critical component that plants need to generate energy? There we go. There, so I've got my soil moist there. Very good, sunlight. So, do you want to hide this in the back of your closet? No way, You're not going to do well there, right? So you want to find um, a sunny windowsill would be a really great place to put this, okay? Or maybe if you have a porch or a balcony, but you definitely need some sunlight, okay? So, you can take your, your herbs here and 
put them in a sunny spot and I'd love for you to watch them over the course of the week and, and thereafter, okay? And, and so you don't want to, once you've got them in and watered down, you don't wanna go disrupting the soil and poking them. Um, you can just leave them to sit, but check on them, observe. So add a little water every few days with this nice potting soil, you should be fine to go three days um, in between watering. If it starts to feel dry on the top, just add a little bit of water, okay? And then you um, watch for signs of growth. And by next week, you should see some peaks of green starting to poke up from some of your seeds. So watch for that. And if yours is like mine, we've got a little, you've got a mix of things in here. So see what you get. See what surprises come of that. So for herbology today, we planted our herbs and we made our mandrake. All right. So I'm going to get this stuff out of, out of our way here. And um, we can move on to Quidditch, if you guys would like to join us for Quidditch. Yes, and you can make your tea leaves if you're just catching up, Anthony. All right, so for Quidditch, we're going to need the stack of cups that's in the bottom of the bag. So you have a stack of three cups, all right, to represent the three hoops. We have three cups. And I'm done with my water. I'm going to get that out of my way. Can I say something really quick? Yes, sir. How is this supposed to like spread out? It's hard to like spread oh, out. Oh, you're, yeah, because you joined us after we started with the clay. So a tip for you, Anthony, is to set the clay down for a second. Rub your hands together to warm your hands up. The heat really helps make it more pliable, OK? And so then you can kind of twist and pull down one end to start to make a nice root. Ooh, let's see if I can get this guy out. There we go. So for those of you finishing your mandrakes or just getting started on your mandrake, there you go. You can make a nice root. You can then start um, plying away towards the top to pull some arms up to make a face. We used our pencil. Or you can use the tips of your scissors. There we go. I'm put them back in the soil so he doesn't scream on me. There we go. All right. So for Quidditch today, we need the big tongue depressors in our bag. So this tabletop Quidditch and snitch catapult. You've got a three plastic cups you've got a ping pong ball yours might be gold or white you have a spoon you have wings for your snitch there, there we go they were upside down so you have wings for your snitch there okay and rubber bands because this is how we're going to hold everything together All right, so for our, this one we're actually creating a catapult to launch our golden snitch. So if you'd like to assemble your golden snitch, you can, um, later you can cut out your wings and you can attach them to your snitch with um, the tape or the glue. And then to create our catapult, this one I wanted to be sure to walk you through, you need seven of your tongue depressors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And these, you just want to stack. So just make a nice tight stack. See that? Line them all up. Make a nice tight stack 
and grab one of your rubber bands. Say, and if you've got one, like I've got one that's bent a little bit that might be creating extra space, just put that on the top. Okay. And then just use your rubber band and put your, your fingers and your thumb right inside there. And you can twist and wrap, twist and wrap, twist and wrap. Okay. And that's going to hold them together in a nice tight sack. So you're going to do that at one end, get another rubber band and repeat it at the other end. Go. So, show you again. I'm putting my thumb and fingers between the rubber band and twist, twist. So, I'm just twisting and wrapping as I go. All right. And it just needs to be snug. It doesn't need to be stretched super tight, it just needs to be snug so it's all held together. This is gonna be one giant spacer for us. So all make of use. Them. Yes. Well, no, not all of them. Seven of them. So seven. pull out, pull out two. The other seven, you're going to make a stack. So chat, you want you want it to be seven high. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now you're gonna take your two that are remaining, and you're gonna make a smaller bundle just with the two. And this time you're gonna put the rubber band only on one end, okay? So same technique, put your thumb and fingers in there. Wrap, twist, wrap, twist, okay? And you can just keep going. All right. Oh, I'm gonna need to give that one more wrap there. Um, okay. Do we put one rubber band on the seven of them? On both so on the seven of them, you're going to put one rubber band on one end. And then when that's done, flip it around and put another rubber band on the other end. So it's going to be secured on both sides. Mm -hmm. But when you put the two together, you only want the rubber band on one end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you want to be able to open it up from the other side. So you see how I have a V now? See that? All right. So now I am going to slip my spacer of my seven bundled tongue depressors here into the V. See that? Okay. There we go. And get it in the middle. So that your sticks will kind of make an X. Everybody see that? I want you to see it from the side. So you see how it's a V up top. But because I have a rubber band holding them together on the bottom, there we go. And it holds it nice and snugly in there. All right. Excellent. Okay. So once I have that in the center, so I've got a really nice X or a plus sign here. Then I can use one of the rubber bands. And this time, instead of just twisting and wrapping on one end, we are going to go diagonally across it. So watch this. I slipped it over one end of my bundle of seven. And now I'm taking the, the bottom of the rubber band around the top of the V there, okay? I'm gonna twist and come over both at both the other end of the bundle of seven and the tip of my V. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to twist it at the bottom and I want my rubber band to make an X. So I'm going to come across this way now so I can secure it from both sides. And again, I'm going across two ends because I want it to go diagonal and create an X. So there it is from the front. Okay, oh, there you go. And I'm gonna show you from the back. See how I have an X? And on the, on the bottom, it kind of loops around, there we go. 
So that is going to keep my bundle of seven from sliding side to side and stabilize my catapult. Okay. So got that X to hold it in place. Now you can you take your spoon, which this is going to help you launch your golden snitch from your catapult. And you can um, grab one or two loops down at the bottom of your rubber band. You can kind of tuck the end of the spoon in there. Okay, so I just put the tip of my spoon through a couple of loops at the bottom of my V because I want the top of my spoon to be at, at the top of the open section of my V. Okay, you see that? With the scoop facing up, because that's what's gonna hold my snitch. Okay, and then to make sure it stays, I can take another rubber band, and I don't wanna go around the whole V, I only want to hold the spoon to the top stick. Okay, so if you're looking sideways here, I want to attach this spoon to just this stick. I don't want to take the rubber band around this one too. I want this one to be able to, to just be attached together, but for these two parts to be able to spread out a little bit. Okay, so here I'm twisting and wrapping, but just the spoon to the top stick. Twist and wrap, twist and wrap, just the spoon to the top stick. And that's just going to hold that in place for me. All right. And remember this is recorded so you guys can come back and watch it if you have any trouble with that rubber band work. All right. And you can always recruit a parent to help if you're having difficulty. Here we go. Okay, show you. And then you can give it a test drive. Now you just want to do this aimed away from your family and your siblings to test it out. But because this spacer here now gives us, so we have some tension here, but we have some freedom at the end to pull back. So you can pull your spoon back and that will come closer, those two sticks will come closer together. See that? And then at the top, you want to release and allow that tension to send your ping pong ball, your snitch. All right, so let's see if we're ready for a target. I don't know that we're there yet, but we will give it a shot. Woo! And you can use your cups lying down to start. And then you can play with moving them upright. But let's just see if we can get our, there we go. All right. And you can add your, your wings to make your golden snitch if you'd like. But I just wanted to test our catapult here. And then you can play with that. As you, um, as you experiment with that, you can carefully adjust the placement of your bundle of seven if you put some even pressure on both sides, you can move it further down into the V. Right now we have it right in the middle and that's a good place to start. And then you can experiment with how moving it closer to the bottom or closer to the top changes the, uh, how, where your, um, how, your, how far your um, snitch, your projectile goes because that's gonna change the freedom of motion on this side. Okay, that's gonna change how far back this would come. All right. So. Ooh, you can hold one end with your fingertip. You can hold the base of the V with your fingertip. Pull that spoon back and launch it. I should have brought more ping pong balls, huh? Okay, so. Then you can set up your hoops or your cups and see how you do trying to get them in the cups. All right. 
So you guys can play some tabletop Quidditch this way. You can recruit your siblings and your family to play with you. There we go. Let's see. And you can stabilize in any way that you find works for you. Experiment with holding at the, the base of the V. You can also hold on the sides. If that helps, if you find that it's, it's doing kind of like this as you're just holding the tip, then you can always hold on that end too and see if you can get more precise as you go. I'm gonna move my cup of water because I see what can happen there. All right. And enjoy your Quidditch game. So we have hit, today we did, so yesterday we did, let's see, we made our wands. We, um, oh gosh, you guys um, made your um, animal Patronus necklaces. We did potions yesterday. Today we did um, herbology. We um, did our, our divination. We read our tea leaves, right? <laughs> and I suggested, for those of you who joined us later, I suggested that you wash out your cup and we only used a tiny bit of our drink mix. So you can wash out your cup and, and do this with um, a sibling or a family member and offer to read their tea leaves. So my tip for that was that you hold the cup up where they're not seeing the bottom of the cup and you put a little bit of the drink mix in so that it covers the symbol on the bottom so that they don't see that beforehand and that becomes a surprise at the end that you look through that liquid and see the symbol below, okay? I have a question. Yes, sir. Our biology one, I haven't did that. I just did the, um, the, that one and this one. Sure. I just did so, the, uh, like the planting one and the Quidditch one. I haven't done the first one. That's what? okay. You can go back and do that. So now you've got time because that? we have our, so today we have our Meet the Keeper at 10.15, if you guys wanna join us for that. That's where we meet one of our animal caretakers and one of our animal residents, one of our animal ambassadors that lives here at the i -Nine. You'll get to log back on and do that at 10.15 if you like. And then at 1.30, you'll get on Zoom with your teachers to, to finish some more activities today. So you've got time in between to catch up on making your mandrake on reading tea leaves and practicing reading the tea leaves of your um, family members, anybody in the house, and, um, and find a nice sunny spot for your, um, for your herbs that you just planted, okay? So you'll find a nice sunny spot for that. And I see you guys are experimenting with where to launch your, um, your catapult from. So see if you can find a stable surface. So, I see the uh, the girls in their in their bed fort were struggling on the soft mattress because as you push down on a soft surface, the soft surface is going to push down too. So you want a harder surface, right? So you can you want some firmness up, uh, so that the energy bounces back up instead of just being absorbed, um, being pulled pushed down into the mattress or onto a soft surface. So. Find a harder surface like they did. They're, they're finding a box to try there. Find something with less give to it because you want the energy to spring back because that um, energy is what's going to propel, that's going to propel your snitch into, hopefully if your aim is good, into a hoop, okay? All right, and remember you can experiment with laying your cups on the side. You can have them upright and explore your trajectory there. And you could even, um, once you've mastered doing it on a, launching it from a solid surface, you can try picking it up and see if you can control it well enough that way. Yes, sir, Anthony. Um, I, have, I have one question or something. Yeah. Um, is this the label? This the one? I can't read that one. So the one that you want, tea leaves, yes, that's your tea leaves and fortune tellers, exactly. 
So that one is going to have your cup for your tea, Anthony. So this is the one we did first. So you can go back and watch this recording when we log off. You can start it up and you'll see that at the very beginning, okay? So you're going to use that cup and your drink mix. And your handy divination sharp. Okay? My cup is broken. Ah, uh, your cup has a little crack in it. You can you can put another cup around it. Um, or if you just if the crack doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, if you just tip it away from the crack as you sip, you should be fine. You you just need a little bit of liquid in there, a little bit of drink mix and a little bit of water. Okay? Okay. All right. Can I say something else? Yes, sir. Uh, how um guys don't forget attendance. <laughs> so Anthony's giving you a reminder to uh, to log on and do your attendance, right? All right. So I hope everybody had a fun morning. We have uh, got a lot in this morning, and there's more for you to do on your own. There is more for you to do with your teachers. We are keeping you guys awfully busy. So have a lot of fun with that, and we will see you back at. 10.15 for the Meet the Keeper, and then you'll join your teachers at 1.30. Everybody have a great Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Take attendance. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone. Mar did not attend the meeting.